everyone knows where Richmond is. It's a real small city. And I knew in my mind that I wanted to be one of the first ones to actually go all the way and set the example. Be that person. If you think of Richmond, you would think of CD Lamb. A great role model, a great person, a great player. The first day Man City met was at a West Ham Lakes court in Richmond, Texas. We was just hooping, shooting around, then we played one on one. And it got a little it got a little competitive. So that's why we became best friends, because we so competitive. We used to live together, so we wake up together, brush our teeth together, do everything together. So we never was really that part. Eight grade football, he was playing running back. And he made this one play against Reading Middle School. It was a run. Off the top, I was like, yeah, this dude's special. When I first saw CD play, I knew that we had something special here. He played Little League football around the corner. And, you know, people talk about the things that he can do and how special he was. Just as a freshman, you could tell that he was on a different level than his peers. In high school, it was crazy just because, like, I thought football of that you just wake up and play just for fun. And uh, I started taking football. Like, I took football serious my sophomore year. I just stopped playing everything else. Quarterback and safety was my first two positions. And then it was running back and safety. And then I saw a linebacker and safety, and I it just started going all over. I don't feel like there's anything I can't do on the football field. He is the only person in America that I've known in my lifetime to catch two Hail Marys in one game. And everybody's like, how is that possible? Well, let me tell you. We were playing Port Lavaca Calhoun in a district game on a Thursday night. And we got the ball with like a minute left. They kick off to us, we drive, and we stall out at about the 35 yard line. Call timeout. But actually the first play was like a trick play, a reverse pass back to the CD on this one. I was in Youngstone, the team, sophomore. We ran a trick play and we ran it so many times in practice that it was unbelievable. We never thought we'd come to the game the way we played that we had to call this play. So we reverse it, right? The quarterbacks are on a wheel, CD's on a trail. The receiver chunks it. The ball is in the air, it's anybody's. So I reached over with my left hand and I caught it. Like it literally stuck to my hand. And I was like, oh, wow. Plucks it out of the air, uh, touchdown. Everybody goes nuts. I mean, you talk about the stands are going crazy. The sidelines are going crazy. We just won the game. And then next thing you know, you see flags on the field also. So I'm like, no. Official threw a flag, a legal man downfield. So now we're like at the 40 yard line. So we call Hail Mary. I guess we just got to do it again, old fashioned way. We snapped the ball. I remember running, I took, I took the perfect angle. I saw the ball in the air. And it's like slow-mo. I locked in the way it was. I mean, I looked down to see where everybody wasn't. And I just jumped first. So I wanted to be the first off the ground. If anybody jumped under me, I took your jump. It seems like everybody was frozen in time. Everybody's up looking at him. He jumped out of nowhere. So I jumped, caught it. Now look, I'm in the end zone. I'm like, oh, and then a guy tried to hit me again. Instantly, hold on to the ball, that's it. Then it's the second celebration of a Hail Mary and it's on, I mean, we go nuts. Oh man, I can't even express the feeling. It was crazy. Demon, he ran all on the field. You're not even supposed to do that. Man, I just ran on the field, hugged him and tackled him, man. We was at the bottom of the pile turning up. There go. Uh-oh. I'm telling you, I go up. I, I got hops. That boy, see, you can tell he a natural born clown. Okay, this fly is gonna kill me. That boy is pretty fun. He can crack some jokes. <laughs> Once you get to know him, he has a great sense of humor. He's super silly and everybody loves him.
You know, his high school stats were the fourth best ever in the history of Texas high school football. CD in space. CD Lamb still running. It's a quarter. CD for the TD. Six minutes. Into the ropes. Don't go until he gets halfway. Give yourself some room to explode. We're a top 10 team in the state of Texas. We have been ranked in the top 10 probably for the last five years, preseason and postseason. Sleep is one of the main things we talk about here. And I think it's one of the ones, it's our secret weapon. Hydration, nutrition, and then sleep has to come with the rest. Everybody talks about grind time and grind season and no days off. Well, then you better be getting eight to nine hours of sleep. You know, he's really the epitome of what we try to provide here at Foster, a great high school experience and an opportunity to achieve and reach your goals, and CD did just that. Now, he's a competitor. He's going to come after you, and he's going to go after the best, and you better bring it. But he's also going to, you know, be the guy that tries to bring up the team. He's a guy that's going to try to do his best for the team, and he's also going to be one of the hardest workers out there as well. Hey, don't forget them arms, baby. Don't forget them arms. That's it, Grayson. When you see people and you meet people like him, like you genuinely just root for him. The animal inside of him, the beast, the athlete that we see today, that was all planned for him. That's what he wanted to do. Kids know what it means to be a receiver for Foster High School because of what he's done, and they see the success that he has on a constant basis. He's just a good person. Like, he, he's deep-natured, good-hearted. Four lean on that back pedal. He made me a better coach, and I hope I made him a better player. When I first started getting recruited, I didn't really understand how the recruiting stuff went at all because no one really explained it to me. Being a kid from Louisiana, not knowing any of that, literally talking to college coaches because not many people in my family actually had the opportunity. I wanted all the phone calls, I wanted all the text messages. Oh, I never seen so many people show up at my door. I chose OU because Coach Riley played a big part in it, a young coach. Uh, he had Baker Mayfield, I saw what he was doing with the offense. Coach Stoops, he's literally legendary in Norman. And then when I got there, I knew that that was the place that I wanted to be. I wanted to learn everything about a new city that I never thought I would be in, Norman. I didn't realize how important sleep was until I got to college. Realizing how much lack of sleep that I was getting and taking the sleep for granted, it was starting to impact on my performance. And I realized the more sleep I got, the more performance and the better I was feeling the next day to go into the practice. Progression was definitely tough for a lot of sleepless nights, just trying to get acclimated with the offense, adjust to the speed, physically be prepared for the, the game, the beatings. Playing in the Big 12 Championship for three years in a row in Arlington, it was like a foreshadow. OU was definitely a great experience. It was a stepping stone for me in life. It proved the work ethic that I put in. I don't do this for the hype. I really play football for real. Here goes Lynn, still going. Declaring for the draft was definitely something that I thought about since the middle of the season of my junior year, just kind of keeping it in the back of my mind that I'm closer to my dream. And he called and said, Mom, we need to talk. He was like, Mom, I believe I did a wonderful job the three years that I was there. So I feel it's time for me to move forward. You could hear it in her voice that she was proud of me. And um, for me to hear that, through, just through the phone, 
I was grateful, you know what I'm saying? I had the next day I went to train for the draft. You see how confident he is in his hands. Leading up to the job, my anxiety was out the roof. I didn't know where I was gonna end up. I remember looking at all 32 hats, like, which one am I gonna pick up? It was just a surreal moment. Number 11 at the Jets. Here it comes. You know, my wife, I got the camera out and we're ready to film and stuff. And then they pick somebody else. So like, all right, so it's all, everybody's cool. It's not a big deal. So yeah, everybody was just quiet. And I guess everybody was thinking like, where, where he gonna fall? I was nervous the whole time. A nervous wreck. We start getting into like 15, 16 and I get a couple texts. Start getting calls. CD going to Cowboys. And I'm like, man, I don't know. With the 17th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select CD Lamb, wide receiver, Oklahoma. When I got the call, it was just like, Dallas. Wow. I ain't think I've ever said, how about them Cowboys in my life? But I said it like a thousand times that night. It was like life changing in five minutes. It couldn't happen to a better person, a better family. Um, I mean, he he's from Texas, played at Oklahoma, which is just North Texas, right? And he's had so much success in Cowboy Stadium. It just seems that it's just a natural fit. I had my family there, so I want them to experience everything that I'm gonna go through, just the excitement, all the good things, the goods, the bads, you know what I'm saying? Just you was there with me when I was struggling. I want you to be there when I'm when I'm happy now, you know what I'm saying? So we did it, but we far from done.